Hello gorgeous people. Today I'm going to be cheating on my Lindy's sprays. <gasps> I know, don't tell Tracy. I'm going to be testing some Marabou mixed media art sprays. Now, these are pretty different from your usual spray in that they are a sprayable acrylic paint. So think of it kind of more like the contents of a spray paint can than um, your general ink spray. Now, I haven't played with these before. This is my first time. So I'm gonna be running them through their paces with some of my favorite techniques and products to see how they react. So today I'm gonna to do a quick journal page testing these art sprays from Marabou and see if they're waterproof and what kind of properties they have. So we're going to look at how they perform on unsealed paper, if you can move them around with water at all, if you can layer them, how opaque they are, and if they really are waterproof. So let's get started. Now, because these are acrylic paint, it does say very clearly on the back that you need to shake it first. So it says water-based acrylic spray for porous surfaces is intermixable, water thinnable, light fast. I can't test that part, not today at least anyway, and waterproof. Shake well before use and after use, pump warm water through the spray head. Now, a lot of the sprays that are acrylic say that because it can be quite frustrating and the nozzles can clog really quickly but this is the first time I'll be using them, so we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna do two layers. I'm going to use Reseda, Caribbean, and Aquamarine on the base. Good shake. I'm gonna spray a little bit of water on my paper just to see how they react. Do they spread? Do they wick? Or do they stay in little blobs? Let's find out. Okay, let's start with Reseda. And Caribbean. And Aquamarine, I think this was, yep. Yeah. So I don't want it to be too wishy-washy. I'd like it to have some color. So at the moment it's a bit too splattery for me. What can I do? Okay. So I'm just going to squash the pages together and that should uh, muddy some of the color a little. At the moment you can see this Reseda is quite bright. It's almost fluorescent looking in some places. See how it looks when it dries. Oh, that's much prettier. Okay, liking that. So just by squishing the pages together, that's kind of made those colors move around a bit more. I don't know if I want a specific edge though, so I'm just going to wipe that off with the paper towel a little here. Oh wow, they dry quite quickly. Like I tried to wipe this wet paper towel over that piece of dry paper and nothing. Now, you'll notice I've got far more patterning and variety on the color on this side. Even while it's still wet, a bit more textured looking. It's almost like the water has reacted with the sprays on here and made little um, marks. And on this side where I've just pressed it down closed, it's more watercolor like. I think I might want a bit more of the aquamarine. Now the page is almost dry at this point, so I'm not expecting the same kind of um, spreading out and wicking effect. Now I hadn't actually intended to do both pages, it just sort of ended up that way. So let's see how we go here. I'm just going to put a bit more of this Reseda on. It's really, really vibrant this one. Not quite anything like I've seen anywhere else. It's um, quite, but really pops. <laughs> more of the Caribbean. Now like um, other water-based sprays, as you spray them sometimes the colors mix and you get uh, different colors or blends of colors. So I'm getting a bit of a dark green here which is quite pretty. 
Now if you'd like it of course to be a little less vibrant you can blot the colour off but I'm going to start by seeing if this is waterproof. So I'm going to dry it with a heat gun. They take really nicely to bare pages, so paper, just as described. The colours blend. If you've sprayed water on first, you get some interesting patterns. It's almost like the water is reacting with the product. Yet if you've squished into the page on top, it's almost a watercolour-like look. Quite soft and pretty. Let's test out its main claim to fame. Is it really waterproof? Does it reactivate? Let's find out. I'm not feeling very patient here. Well, it's kind of cool too. So when you lift it off, it leaves little puddles of colour with a paler centre. Mm, I should like, well, quite like that. Now, I'm just going to do this the simplest way I know how. I'm going to spray it with some water and then I'm going to blot with a paper towel and see how much colour is either lifted or transferred. With products that are less permanent, if I spray with water, you'll find two things. When I put the paper towel on top, there's quite a bit of colour transfer to the paper towel and when you lift it off, there's quite a lot of lifting of colour from the surface. Um, the more permanent the product, sometimes you'll still get some colour transfer, but you won't see the lifting of colour as much. So, I'm going to be really mean to this and I'm going to put a bit of water on, then leave it for about, let's say, 20 seconds. Now I've got water all over the surface there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, <laughs> 18, 19, 20 ish. Okay, so that's had time to sink into the paper a little. Let's find out. And. Ooh, okay. It's not where I thought that was going from the color. No transfer. And. No bleaching, no colour lifting. Okay, well it did say permanent on the bottle. I have to say I was a little bit sceptical. Um, but that does seem to be a permanent colour. It's, it's interesting though, when you have a look, can you see the colour has separated somewhat? And that's just where I've got the water underneath. So this side has a little bit of colour separation where I've sprayed the acrylic paint over the water that I'd put on the page. And this side does not. This side looks more watercolory, if you can see what I mean. So perhaps don't spray water on the page first if you'd like a more even result. But saying that, the water did help the product spread. So, mm, depends on what you're going for. All right, so now that we know that these are permanent and that is pretty cool, that is like their biggest selling point that they are permanent and don't move, it's time to try out a few other techniques and products to see how they play well with others or if they play well with others. So the first thing I'm going to do is test them out with a stencil. Now I hate using stencils with my normal sprays because they wick and bleed under the bottom. I have a real mess on my hands. So let's see if these guys do the same thing. Now to test these out, I'm using them with one of the worst stencils for this kind of thing, which is a text stencil. But I'll be a bit nice and I'll also use them with just some round spots from a Tim Holtz stencil, just to see what they can do. Okay, so let's try a little layering here. This one's just some simple spots. And let me try some of the raspberry. Now shake until the little ball is moving freely. This could go badly, so we'll just see how it goes. Whoo, that's strong color. Wow, that's strong color. Kind of really like this bit, to be honest. Can't just leave it sitting like that, so I'm just gonna add a few little, you know me, I like my splattery bits. Might let that dry. Let's give this a go. All right, so this is lavender. Oh, this seems quite a lot lighter. Not in a bad way, just it seems a lot lighter. And I've got to say, I've been kind of surprised, in a good way, 
they haven't wicked or bled as much as some of the other sprays I use with stencils. Now, that doesn't mean they've given a perfectly crisp result. They haven't. Um, it's a little fuzzy around the edges and it has wicked out slightly, but not as much as other sprays. So these are pretty cool to use with stencils. Now the last color I've got is gold. Now this one took quite a lot of time to get the little ball to start shaking. And even when I did, there was a lot of the metallic color still sitting on the bottom. Now I really have no clue how opaque the gold is. Um, a little nervous to be honest here. Now I'm sort of splattering it on again. I've got a few big splats and a few little ones and I will do the same thing. I'll close the page. Whew, that one smells. Wow. <laughs> the others, I couldn't... If it did smell, I didn't notice it, but that one... Whew, <laughs> that one's a bit whiffy. Well, that's better. Just sort of ended up with a little double. Now that we've got the stencils out of the way, I'm going to try them with gesso. Now, on my normal ink sprays, the gesso will pick up and reactivate a little of the spray, no matter how great they are or how much you've sealed them, and take on a little of the color, which can be really beautiful, but sometimes you want crisp white. So, do those marabou sprays give you a crisp white? Let's have a look. To test this, I'm using a Donna Downey stencil with white gesso from Jane Davenport and just applying it like I normally would. Now, because Jane's gesso is a little thinner than some of the thick gessos on the market, I'm doing three coats just to build up that beautiful white color. Now, doing this with a normal art spray would definitely reactivate some of the color underneath, but as you can see right here on the page, it's not reactivating. It has actually been permanent. So you can get beautiful, crisp, white gesso over the top without any bleed through. Now that's pretty cool too. Now to test this out with some pencils. So I've grabbed Jane Davenport's Magic Wand pencils um, and I'm just testing out some darker colors on the hair. Now, as you can see, it's allowing me to lay down that first color really nicely and it's allowing me to shade one over the top of the other. So this is pretty cool. So that is giving me a beautiful result with those dark pencils. Let's try some lighter ones and see how that goes. Ooh, okay. <laughs> That's not going so well. With my first coat of a, a nude colored pencil, it looks like I'm getting some weird little scratchy marks. Almost like it's marking the paint underneath, scratching it and making little dents, even though I'm really not pressing very hard. So let's try a couple of darker colors and see if that gets any better. Oh no, <laughs> okay, that looks terrible. Oh wow, okay. I think I can see the difference here. Up near the hair, there's not a lot of spray and it's where I had some of the water. So it's been diluted slightly, which is where that beautiful dark color on the hair is going over so well. But the body has several layers of colors and it's a bit more concentrated and it's behaving like acrylic paint, which I suppose it is, because that sort of makes sense. So that pencil is not going over well at all. Wow, that looks terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'll see if I can fix that. <laughs> All right, so uh, if it's been thinned with water, it seems to work with pencils. If it has not been thinned with water, it works like acrylic paint. All right, so I'm gonna try outlining with some of the mermaid markers just to separate that image from the background a little. I'm still thinking at this point how to fix that pencil, but we'll get there. Um, so I'm going to use some beautiful colors from Jane and I'm going to start with beach jellyfish and then work my way up to the beautifully dark deep sea which is that lovely purple now i'm using this with a water brush to help spread some of those colors out so it's not quite so intense and i've managed to get a little bit of that dark purple on my gesso outline so i'm gonna just cover it with the purple and see how that looks all right so i'm not super happy with that purple on the gesso it's just i thought it might help separate the image from the background but it's just a bit wishy-washy. So I'm gonna wipe that off with a baby wipe. Oh, wow, that is cool, interesting, and unexpected. All right, so while I'm wiping that, or some of that color off with the baby wipe, I've noticed that it's actually wiping the pencil off the back of the lady that I've just applied it to. I have never had that happen before. <laughs> so um, I don't know if it's the pencils. I'm not sure if it's the sprays underneath. I'm suspecting the sprays. 
but you can wipe your pencil off with a baby wipe. So I'm just going to wipe that off the back. Um, now it won't all be removed, but it will make it lighter and hopefully rescue that image a little bit because that pencil work was just terrible. But this is all an experiment with new products, so see how it all works. So let me just fix that up and wipe the rest of that off with a baby wipe. All right, so now that the main image does not have as much color on there as I was thinking of putting on there to begin with, I need to sort of amp up the drama on the page a bit. So I'm just going to use some more of that black gesso because that looked really stunning on the opposing page when I used it with the stencil. Um, so now I'm just going to add some really bold floral elements to each of those pages to really make that color pop. And you'll notice that by adding black or white uh, against bright colors, it'll make the colors look more intense. So let me just finish that. All right, now that I've got that black gesso dried, I think I need to add some black on my main image just because it's looking a little bit out of place now. So I'm just going to grab a black Sharpie marker. I'm not going to go over the entire stenciled image. I'm just going to go over the inside edges just to highlight it. So quickly I'm going to go on the Surfie. So this black Sharpie will really help make it look so much more dramatic. Sorry, sometimes my cat just has to appear in a video or at least the sound of a video. <laughs> okay, that is making that pop off the page. That is fantastic. I think I need to add a little acrylic paint because I want to see how it plays over the top of those sprays. So I'm just going to add acrylic paint to the lady's bottom half. So where she has a towel or sheet or whatever it is wrapped around her. And I'm trying some of the paints from Jane Davenport, uh, just the acrylics, just in two different shades of blue to see how that works. Now I'd like some of the background peeking through so it doesn't look quite so blocky. So I'm going to use a water brush to apply the paint so it thins it and you get more of a translucent uh, glaze than you would if it was uh, just straight acrylic paint applied with a brush. So I'm just going to add two colors there and shade it slightly. Now that's actually working pretty well. Um, you'll notice the acrylic paint looks like it's been applied over any other acrylic paint. So those sprays really do work like acrylics. Um, so think of it this way, anything you can use over acrylics normally will work over these sprays. Anything you would avoid, like pencils maybe, <laughs> perhaps don't try them over here. Now just to finish off with a little bit of glitz, I'm going to use some of the Glitz C markers from Jane Davenport. Um, she's got some of my favorite products at the moment, so I always sneak those in when I can. Uh, and just adding a little bit of warm gold. So I'm gonna add it on some of those dark black areas that's so really in your face and metallic and shiny and shimmery. And then I'm just gonna blend it on top of my main image, just using my finger and a water brush, just to get a hint of shimmer, because you know I like shimmer. Wow, okay, and I think my page is finished. And these sprays are not like anything I have in my current arsenal, that's for sure. So quick recap, they're definitely permanent, you can layer them and mix the colors. You can spread them with water, but they work better if you just spray them directly onto your project. Make sure to really shake that little ball bearing so that all of those nice acrylic paint particles are mixed evenly throughout the bottle. And especially with the gold, I really had to shake that one a lot to get um, the mix right. I suppose that's why the ball bearing's in there. Uh, they work really well with stencils, just don't spray on too much. The gesso or white paint or whatever you put over the top is no bleed. So that is great for getting crisp white images and colors on the top of these sprays. Not so great with pencil, but that's okay. Acrylic paint over the top works just like acrylic paint over the top of any other acrylic paint. And of course, you can add shimmer with other products over the top. But the most interesting thing for me about these is that they are permanent. Now, one thing I need to mention, uh, when you're layering them, they're not quite as crisp or clean as some of your dye ink colors. They don't go muddy and yuck, they're not nasty in any way, but they're just not as clean a color. That's probably because they're slightly opaque uh, and because you've got acrylic paint particles suspended 
in the spray. Um, they're beautiful and they're vibrant and I would totally go out and buy some more, um, but they don't work quite the same in case you're used to ink sprays. So some of the things you can do over a dye ink spray, you can't do over these. But just so you know that, you can tailor the products you're using and make some beautiful artwork with these as well. So I think these will be a different um, but really handy addition to my mixed media toolbox. And I'm really glad that Kylie has started stocking these so I could have a play. So why don't you grab some of these Marabou art sprays for mixed media and have a play in your own art journal. Next time I might try using these with my current sprays and see how they work together. That could be interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed my little review on Marabou mixed media sprays. And remember, totally these are like acrylic paint. They're not like your normal ink sprays. So have a play, see what you think of them. Okay, <laughs> bye. I'll be back with more. You know it.